The next job is to fit the pistons and liners onto the block. Each piston and its matching liner is put on the tray. Every piston is matched with its own pin. This is because they were balanced by machining the centres of the pins. For each piston they are colour coded to identify them. Each piston is also marked with the weight, I believe that's the weight of the pin, and also the number of the piston. The outside circlip is fitted on pistons 1 and 3. For each liner there are three o-rings. Two of these are fitted into the liner holder which go to the top as you can see in this photo and the other one fits onto the liner as you can see here. Special grease is then applied to the liner and also into the liner holder. Then just by pressing down onto it on a flat surface the liner for number 3 and number 1 are fitted. With liners 1 and 3 fitted we're now going to fit piston 2 onto the block. Before we do this we put on the gasket which you can see here noting the top marking which shows the top side. Then lubricate the small end and we're now going to assemble the piston. So the rings are already on, we inspect the rings and move them around so that the gaps are 120 degrees apart. Then lubricate them and put them in a piston ring compressor. You'll see on the left hand side of the picture here that there's a special ring. We're going to fit this onto the bottom of the piston ring compressor. You can see that the piston is just poking out the bottom of the compressor there. And this ring is then assembled and pushed onto the piston. So this is aligned so that it's straight on the piston and it holds all the rings in place. The piston is then fitted to the engine making sure that the large cutout on the piston is towards the top because these larger cutouts are for the intake valves. With the piston in place the circlips fitted on both ends. You can also see here some protective sleeves over the cylinder head studs. The engine is then turned over and the piston is guided into the block. So you can see here it ends up flush against the face of the block. We then need to assemble pistons 1 and 3, making sure that the liners are lubricated before they go in. And then these two are fitted. Lubricate the small ends for pistons 1 and 3. Then pistons 1 and 3 are pushed down to the bottom of the liners so that the pins can be fitted. Once we've made sure there's clearance to be able to get the pins out, as you can see here, we then fit pistons 1 and 3 onto the rods. With those fitted onto the rods we then need to put the circlips onto the end of the rods. This is quite a tricky process as you'll see there's not much space to get in there. With the pistons fitted onto the rods, a spacer is put on each side of the liner to hold the liners a certain distance above the block and then the liner assembly is pushed down against the spacer and held in place. All that remains now is to fit the liner for cylinder 2. So this is greased up in the same way as liners 1 and 3 were. The engine now needs to be turned over and carefully withdraw piston 2 from the engine so that it's sitting in the gap at the bottom of the liners. Liner 2 is then put into place so that it's basically against the top of the piston so that the piston is into the bottom of the liner. Then a special tool is used to hold the liner in place. You'll see this consists of a centerpiece which goes into the top of the liner and then a clamp which goes over the top of the liner. This will hold it in place whilst the piston is put into the bottom of the liner and will then be used to push the liner into place. After checking that everything's lined up, the engine is then turned over slightly to pop the piston into the bottom of the liner. And the ring which has been used to hold the piston rings in place is now loose and can be removed. With this removed, the liner can be pushed all the way home using the special tool. You'll feel some more resistance as it goes over the O-rings. Then once this is in place, the special tool can be removed. Undo the two nuts which are holding the liners in place just so that the spacers can be withdrawn and then after the spacers have been withdrawn the whole liner assembly can be pushed home. This completes the assembly for one side of the engine so put some nuts on 
the liners to make sure that they can't lift up and then repeat exactly the same operation for the other side of the engine. Once both sides are done we'll just tie the timing chains up out of the way for transportation and the next step will be to get the heads fitted.